Good morning. Today we're continuing to talk along the lines of who you are in Jesus, the new person. Uh, waking up to the reality of your righteousness. Waking up to the reality of the new person that you are. Now, what I'm saying is within the setting of dealing with difficult things in your life, where you might be going through a difficult time, where you might be going through a very difficult time financially, where you might be going through a very difficult time emotionally, or where you might be at a place where there is someone very close to you that is seeking the destruction of your life, or who acts towards you in a way where it is destructive towards you. Now, in the midst of all of that, I've got a word that is stronger than what is happening to you. And that is in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, if you then be risen with Christ, or in the context of Colossians 3, we can basically say, since you have then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Now, what does it mean to seek the things that that are above. I want to say this to you. That does not mean that you are seeking to go to heaven. That's not what it means. When it talks about Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of God, it is uh, a way wherein the Jews would understand that Jesus is now king and that the rulership of, of God is invested in the man Jesus and that he now is ruling in the earth with the rulership of heaven. So we are now seated with Jesus in heavenly places. That means that we are under his jurisdiction and that his power and rulership is in our life. And as he rules in our life, we are now with him at a place where that rulership of life can show forth in our lives and even affect those that are around us. So this doesn't have a lot to do with where you go when you die. It's got a lot to do with what has happened after Jesus died and rose again so that we can now be set free from the power of death or the power of whatever came into this world through the disobedience of Adam, be it any form of sickness, be it any form of oppression, be it any form of negativity that that there is in this world, be it that you've been harmed in a great way. Let's say, for instance, that you have been uh, molested when you were you were a child. It is something that has happened to you and it is something that has an effect on your life. And it might be something that you're truly struggling with and your mind can, cannot get away from that. You you want to get to a place where you don't where you are not even thinking of that. So when you have this mindset of what has happened to you, I want to say to you, you can acknowledge that it did happen to you. You can acknowledge that it does have an effect on you. But I also want to say that there's a higher authority, the authority of Jesus. And that authority is that he's entered into that death that you've experienced. And he has now been raised from the dead. And he now has a new form of existence, basically. He was born as a mortal man. And now he's raised as an immortal man and he sits in the authority of life and we now even though we are still having our mortal bodies we've got the privilege of having a life born from the immortal life of Jesus since we are co-seated with him and while we are still having a body of mortality we can now have a joy and a presence of the rule of Jesus in our lives where we in this earth live from the reality of what has happened where a person that has been molested or a person that maybe experiences cancer in his life or a person that experiences financial prosper uh, 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 poverty in his life can be at a place where he says my life and my thoughts and who I am is not born from these things that happen but it is born from Christ and that is what the Bible says in Romans 8 that his spirit aids us and his spirit makes intercession for us it's almost to a certain degree something that uh, is kind of unfair it is we are now experiencing a heavenly life while we are still in the presence of the earthly things so when I look at this passage it says that seek those things which are above let me just look at um, at that word seek there yeah it means to be in worship it means uh, to abound or to inquire from or to require so it's saying require 
that which is from the higher level of authority. The higher level of authority is the authority of Jesus. So it says, seek that. That seek would mean to say, that is what I want. It's like going to a shop and a person says, what are you seeking for? And then you say, what you want. In the very same way, we can now go to the throne room of grace and say, we are seated with Christ. And now what I'm seeking is the manifestation of his rule over me, for I am risen with him into a brand new life. Verse 2 says, set your affection or in the Greek, exercise your mind. In what is above. Yesterday we mentioned that we so easily want to exercise our mind in the things of this earth. We want to study the problem. But let us exercise our mind in what it means to be co-risen with Jesus. Let us exercise our mind. Let us come to a place where we think of what it means that, yes, Adam died and we were included in his death. But what does now mean if our Adam has not disobeyed and we are raised with him? How does this new life apply to that? For instance, and I think I did mention in my Sunday message, either in the Afrikaans or English message, let's go back to molestation, for instance, or let's use something else. Somebody robbed you or stole from you, and it caused a bankruptcy, or it caused that it radically changed your life. When you look at what happened in history when someone did something like that, and you look at the effect that it has, You would then take that and say, well, I've seen what has happened there, and I'm not going to investigate that too much. I'm not going to investigate too much on what could have been if it wasn't like that, because that will just get you into that spiral where you just go down into the depths of darkness. But now, what do we do? We go even back further. We say, okay, this person has done this bad thing to me, but what has God done for me? God raised Jesus from the dead for me. Now we say, okay, what has got the greatest effect? What this guy has done or what God has done in Jesus? Well, what God has done in Christ trumps a billion times what this person has done for me. I am not anymore at a place where I am disadvantaged. One could say, well, this person, they've molested me or something's happened. They've placed me at a, at a place of this, where I'm disadvantaged. But in looking at what Christ has done and waking up to that reality puts you at a place where you're now born from the authority of life, which trumps the authority of death, which means that you can today start to experience the life of God uh, in, this, in this earth. And, but it says there's something that we have to look at, and that is that we set our affection or exercise our mind in the things that's obviously of the higher authority and not of the authority of the earth, although we are living in the earth. Now, that sounds like a contradiction, but I want to say this to you. We are living in the earth, but as we are in the earth and on the earth, there's an authority that is on the earth. That means on earthly level. But then on the earth, there is an authority that's heavenly where Christ rules with all authority. He's been given all authority on earth. So the heavenly authority comes to the earth and we are now mindful of that and we are seeking that. He says then in verse 3, because there's a reality, we are dead and our lives is now hidden with Christ in God. So what he's simply saying is, is while you live on this earth, your true life is the life that comes from the authority of the higher rulership, which is that of Christ, where Jesus has conquered the the death in this world and the effect of death in this world, meaning he's conquered what Adam has done, and we can have that reality now to live from. Remember, you are a new creation in Jesus. Your life has been made new. Amen.